talking about stimulus control. All right, first off, we need to understand this three-term contingency. We haven't been talking much about it. Let me adjust my camera here. All right. um, we haven't been talking much about it, but uh, so let's just go, ho go over it again. So what Skinner discovered was that basically there is this three-term contingency, this set of uh, this rule that behavior can be described under. Now, we can describe behavior in all sorts of ways, but this is one that is very parsimonious and it has a lot of empirical support for it. Uh, it again, it came out of the animal literature, it was applied to humans, but uh, it has held very well. And up there, you notice that I said it may be a four term. That fourth term is the motivating operations that we talked about, you know, how um, the MOs, you know, the establishing operations or the abolishing operations, those can affect the value of the reinforcement. Some people write those in here, you know, in terms of in front of this thing, kind of like what you saw in the past. So some people put those MOs in this somewhere, and I, I just it's not a requirement. The, the basic three-term contingency is there. Um, it can be modified. There are things that modify the reinforcers. There are things that modify the discriminative stimuli. Um, but basically, it, it all boils down to this is the core of it, right? Um, with in, Inside this three-term contingency, what you have is several things. Number one, you've got a stimulus right here. Okay? That stimulus is called a discriminative stimulus. Uh, the next thing that you see is a response, and the next thing that you see is a stimulus okay, um, that is reinforcing. Right? You could have a punishing stimulus here as well. You can also use additional notation like an SR plus to talk about positive reinforcement, or SR minus to talk about negative reinforcement. But that's here nor there. Really, it, this is just about, uh, it, it, it just need to know that there's a stimulus out there, a consequence. Another way to think of the three-term contingency is that A, B, C's. And the antecedents, the behaviors, and the consequences for behavior. So keep in mind, consequences do not imply good or bad. Consequences are just a thing that happens, right? It's a stimulus that you experience as a result of whatever behavior that you've done in a particular context. And what I just said there was actually redescribing the three-term contingency. Okay. Believe it or not, the controlling factor here, the, the factor that's the most important, is actually this factor, okay? The consequence. Um, when we say stimulus control, we're really talking about this up here, but it's kind of a misnomer. So you'll see why we call it that here in a second. But um, ultimately, the, the actual powerful stimulus is right here. It's the consequence. That's the one that actually maintains or decreases behavior. This is the one that, or if there's no consequence, right, then you have extinction. And if you have extinction, then the behavior is going to go away. So the consequence is what's really important. But that consequence occurs after a response in a particular context. So what we're, we're going to talk about is how that context, uh, how reinforcing somebody or something or some behavior in that context um, is how we, we learn to do, uh, learn to perform behavior in one setting and not in another. Okay. So the idea is that the ability of, of that particular context that we're operating in and behavior, all right? So again, the, the, we've got the context and behavior is going to generalize. So if I'm doing something in situation one, so let's say location one, um, we could think of a stoplight or something like that. So if you learn to stop at a stoplight in Spokane, which you, know, you may or may not actually learn that here, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> so if you learn to stop at a stoplight in Spokane, then you go on to Seattle, it, context changed, all right? Um, but the behavior is gonna generalize. So when you see a stoplight in Seattle, you're probably still gonna stop. Right? So your behavior generalizes, and stopping in a red light in Seattle will get you reinforced. So, um, so it works, right? So the ability of this context and behavior to generalize is susceptible to new or existing consequences. That generalization ran into a new concept, ran into the same consequence, right? So it's an existing consequence. So it ran into the same thing. So your behavior then, then you learn that okay, stopping at red lights is important in Spokane, and it's important in Seattle, right? Um, the red light behavior is really easy to think about in terms of generalization. It gets a little harder when you think about other things as well. Right? Uh, so when you think about your verbal behavior, right? so how you speak, um, how I speak in lecture is a little bit different than how I speak on a daily basis. Right? And you don't hear me walking around giving lecture all the time, although my wife might disagree. Um, it's still you know, me. You know, it, it, I still learn to behave in one way in one setting and another way in another setting. So that, that, that context um, is really a cue to you to say that reinforcement is available for a given behavior. Right? So in the context of cities that have stoplights, there's a reinforcer available. 
right? That reinforcer, or the reinforcer available for a particular behavior, and that particular behavior is stopping at the stoplight. So if the city doesn't have any stoplights, and I used to live in a city that we had no stoplights, and I wouldn't call it a city, but we didn't have any streetlights. We had like two stop signs. Anyway, um, in those settings, there's no there, there's no stoplight available, so stopping for a red light is non-existent. So that there's no reinforced there, so there's no signal to the organism. Um, about what to, what's going to be reinforced, and that's what a discriminative stimulus really does. It signals to the or organism, or to the person, that a particular response is going to be reinforced in this setting. Okay. Um, you, know, you might get away with something at your grandma's house that you wouldn't get away with at home. Right? As a result, your grandma becomes a discriminative stimulus for a particular behavior that will likely get reinforced. And you try that in a new environment, and it may not work. So it, you, know, you go to your one grandma's house, and you, maybe you get away with swearing around, around her. But then you go to another grandma's house, and not a chance. All right? You try swearing in the presence of her, and you're going to get soap in your mouth or something like that. Right? Um, so the idea is, is that within each one of these contexts, we can... Uh, train up a particular behavior and different contexts can hold different behaviors um, and particular behaviors are going to be reinforced in one situation and not in another situation and that's what we're when we start getting into st uh, stimulus control that's what we're really talking about is how that context is a really Im important factor over what behavior you're going to do okay. still that said keep in mind when it is the reinforcer that's the powerful stimulus right it's just that the first stimulus signals that there's reinforcement of it